back in the 98 LS400 with another vlog style video for you. So just started the car up cold, just drove to the bank right down the street. And uh, so far so good, no warning lights, everything's running perfectly, nice and quiet and smooth. There is a little bit of a clunking sound when I go over bumps. I don't know if that's my strut mounts or something else. And it's been doing that for a while. I need to figure out what's going on. But I'm taking the car on a couple of errands. Like I said, I had to go to the bank. I need to make a little, little coffee stop uh, before I run back to my house. Then I'm gonna go to the tire shop, have them check out the alignment, maybe rebalance the tires, not sure. I'm probably gonna go through the car wash and get this tree sap off because it's just bugging me. I hate to spend the money, but that's how it goes. Um, still no word from the Kia dealership. I haven't called them. I figured they probably need a day to figure out what's going on. So I will update you, hopefully today, later in this video. Um, in any case, I will check back later. It's time for some coffee. I came back, that was quick. I have an idea and I'm curious to see what you think. Now, obviously in the newer cars, the hybrids and whatnot, they kind of shut off on their own. This car right now, as you can see, it's running at a pretty high idle. That's just because, and also as you can see, it's, it's cold. So it's still kind of in warm up mode. And while I wait for my coffee, I'm just gonna turn it off, save the gas. You know, especially because it's running rich. Now, Scotty Kilmer, everyone loves Scotty. Uh, he says that the weak point in this car is the starter. Um, and okay, I got a I got a gripe for a second. Hear me out. Probably about a year ago, I can't remember exactly when, he made a video saying that he would never touch one of these cars, none of the Lexuses with a V8, because of the starter is like a thousand dollars to do because it's under. The, you have to take the intake manifold out to get to it. <clears throat> and he just said, it's ridiculous, you know, it, it'll cost too much to fix. But I mean, that was really his only point of contention with this car was just the starter. You know, for me, I think if, I think if all you have to do is one expensive starter and then that lasts you five or 10 years, you know, that's worth it. I mean, it sucks to have to pay that money, but you know, I don't think that's uh, that big of a deal. I mean, I've had this car for 90,000 miles. I don't want to jinx it, but you know, no issues with the starter, it's been perfect. So I think if you're using OEM parts, you know, I think it is a gamble that's worth taking. And then later this year, he made a video saying like, you know, you should buy an LS400, it's the best car ever. So anyway, I guess he's been huffing gasoline or something. <laughs> but I mean, truth be told, Scotty is kind of a guilty pleasure for me too. I, I've watched a lot of his videos and especially in the early days. So, you know, much respect to one of the, uh, you know, OGs of YouTube and, and certainly a huge name in the automotive YouTube realm. So but anyway, I, if you watch Scotty's video and you think it's bad to turn off your car and turn it back on, yeah. I think it's worth the risk. Anyway, check back later, bye. Welcome back to the vlog. So I know this is all gonna be one video, but this is different parts of my day. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna take my car back to the tire shop, have them check out that alignment. But before I do, I've gotta deal with all of this tree sap sitting on the car, not that you know, I need to impress the tire shop people, but I have found, and just like as a general, general rule of thumb, uh oh, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> I figured out why my car has been driving like complete garbage. They didn't tighten my lug nuts. Oh my goodness. I heard a sound of like, I thought somebody was working on a chain link fence, but no, 
Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, that's interesting, American Tire Depot. I wonder if like, I wonder if the rest of these are like even on. They don't, do those look all the way on to you? They look all the way on to me. Maybe that's why my car felt like it was, uh... well, that could have been really terrible. I'm not sure what to do. I mean, I don't know what to do. Tire shop isn't that far away. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Now, the smart man would uh, have the car towed. But, uh, you know, smart man isn't here right now. It's just me. I'm gonna forego the car wash. And I'm gonna hope that my right front doesn't fall off while I drive. <laughs> I can't believe it. I mean, I can believe it, but, you know, what if, what if that had happened while I was going 55, you know, um, on, on one of the uh, brisk freeways we have here. That is really concerning. You know, it's like you go to a place, you go to a place to get work done, you assume that you're dealing with professionals. You assume that they're gonna double check, you know, but it's not the case which is why I like to do my own work when I can. Um, unfortunately today, you know, I don't have time. So what I would do is jack the car up. You know, what the smart man would do is jack the car up and tighten all the lug nuts, you know, and uh, make sure that they're all snug. But I'm gonna go ahead and roll the dice. I mean, I drove God, I've driven how many miles? 216 miles. No, more than that. More than that. Um, because I did, I did another probably 60 miles before refilling. So, so I've probably done about close to 280 miles, you know, with that lug nut being loose. And uh, golly, that's just crazy. You just think new tires, everything's good. But I mean, again, I understand they they're in a hurry and stuff, but I mean, I just don't think that's any excuse, you know, and that's, I mean, what if my kids have been in the car, you know, and something happened? That's, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Sorry. I'm just like really mad right now. <laughs> I'm fuming uh, and venting. So like, I know they didn't do that intentionally to try and kill me, but, you know, it doesn't seem very professional. So I'm going to watch them tighten all my lug nuts. And I'm going to watch them do an alignment on this car. Um, and yeah, like I said, I'm just going to roll the dice and try and get to the tire shop without, you know, totaling my car. Um, unbelievable. I'm almost there. You know, the other thing, whenever you get tires, make sure to check and see if your center caps are there. It's happened to me. It's happened to my mom. Uh, it's happened to a lot of people. So, you know, whenever you take your car in, you may even want to go the extra mile, take your center caps off first, you know, then have them do the tire work and then you put them back on. It happened on my Crown Vic too, 
you know, I went for a tire repair and uh, center cap fell off immediately because they didn't even put it on. It was just kind of like held in place. Anyway, I'm here. Uh, I'm not gonna yell at these guys on video. So, but they better make this right. Later. The Lima Street, maybe you balance the ring, the, the tire, yeah, the tire is balancing. Yeah, Lima, look, the street, the, uh, the alignment no good, and the car no, no, this one, no, yeah. put the street, the power steering. Uh -huh. Look, yeah, yeah I thought, I talked to the moon. Balance your tire, right? Maybe four tire balance. Okay, so they may just need a rebalance. Yeah. And that's what's causing it to feel a little, yeah. a little sketchy. Yeah, yeah, low. Back at the shop. They torqued down my lug nuts with a torque wrench. And I went on a drive with the alignment tech. He thinks the alignment's perfect, but that the tires may be Kind of out of balance so i'm not sure i quite buy that but i'll give them the benefit of the doubt they're putting it up on the lift right now I'm gonna watch see what they do especially when they put put the wheels back on make sure all the lug nuts are in place and tighten down the spec so that's what's up we'll see what happens We're back, another update. Man, <laughs> what a day. So I went for a ride with the alignment tech. He said his alignment was perfect. Maybe, I don't know. But he thought that the uh, tires were out of balance. So they uh, gave me their best guy to rebalance the tires. And they showed me that basically like because the tires are new there's a little bit of this happening but that the balance job is perfectly within spec the tires just need to break in i haven't really experienced that before in my experience you get new tires and they're awesome you know especially michelin's but you know i'll give it a thousand miles we'll see see how it feels you know i still have no word about my kia so it may be that I put a thousand miles on this car pretty quickly and you know, and that's fine. I, it's, it's nice to actually get it out on the road again. Um, so everything should be tightened up and, uh, and good to go. I'm just going like 25 miles an hour right now. So I can't really tell the difference one way or the other, but I think my wheels are all on <laughs> and, and I would hope all my lug nuts this time. I didn't, I couldn't quite see them tighten everything but I was within visible range and I felt like they knew I was watching so they knew I wasn't happy so you know that that helps but then after all of that I got in my car and my lug nut key was not present so now that's not a big deal with newer cars because most newer cars don't have locking lug nuts but you know back in the day when these cars were new, you know, you had these. And without this, like if I have a flat, I'd be, I'd be in a whole heap of trouble with 
unable to put my spare on. So if you do have locking lug nuts, make sure, make sure you know where it is and make sure you check that you have it before you drive away. Um, and I'm glad I, I'm glad I noticed because they were just going to let me leave and keep my locking lug nut um, key. That also happened to me, you know, not to bag just on American Tire Depot, but that also happened to me at um, the other place I like to go or used to, America's Tire. They, uh, the one in Fullerton, they actually, I totally drove away and then realized that they had my key and I had to go back. It took, took an extra 10 minutes just like getting off the freeway, turning around, getting back on the freeway, getting back off, waiting at stoplights, you know the drill. So that was a drag. Um, I mean, I just, I hate it when shops don't, don't go the extra mile to be detailed like that. And, uh, it, you know, most importantly, it just, it just seems real negligent, you know? Uh, and I don't, I don't appreciate it. But in any case, I'm sorry to sound like a cranky man who hates everything. I really don't, but it's just the experience I'm having today. I'm going to take this through the car wash, going to pick up my dad, take him to his shop to pick up his car, and then, uh, then I'm going to drive to work. So I'll be back. All right, we've reached. Time to go home. This is my favorite feature. I know I covered this already, but I love this car. That's so cool, 1998 sunroof open. All right, I'll check back in a minute. All right, here we are cruising comfortably back on the freeway. Now, you know, I, I've been talking about what it's like to drive a 23-year-old car, and most of the time this car doesn't feel like it's 23. It feels, you know, like I said, very modern except for the lack of certain conveniences and the cushy ride and all of that, that stuff. But you know, we got dual zone climate control and an aftermarket radio. Okay, that's pretty much it. Auto windows and stuff, but very nice car. But as you can see, our tachometer is not working at the moment. And this doesn't happen very often, but you just have to know the right spot. For me, it's usually about right there. So just give it a, That's what I love about this car. It's been doing that since I bought it, you know, back in 2015, and it's still fine. You know, most of the time that doesn't even happen, but I know the spot. Thank you to uh, Robert, the previous owner, for showing me that. I, I think I had already given him the money, and then he told me about that little intermittent problem. But, you know, hey, no big what. It, it works just fine. Um, so, Let's see, we already talked about the tires, how they need to break in, which is the craziest thing I've ever heard, but you learn something new every day, hopefully. Uh, the car seems to be driving, I feel like it's tracking straighter. Maybe the wheels weren't on all the way, and that's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, but maybe, maybe it was just the locking lug nut, they forgot to put the key on it, so it fell off. But not very confidence inspiring uh, other than that everything's looking pretty good you can see current miles per gallon we're getting 20 in between okay it's less every time i say something come on go back up there we go see 24.5 miles per gallon you can't beat it really good um but after driving my kia plug-in hybrid for so long it it's really a tough pill to swallow seeing that already gone through this much gas uh, in, in a short amount of time. It's so yeah, 20.9 miles per gallon average, 303 miles since refueled. So I refilled on Sunday and today it is Wednesday. So that's a good amount of miles. I suppose by the time I get back to my area, we're going to be looking at uh, Oh, probably like 365 miles around there. Maybe a little less. I'm gonna stop for gas on my way home at the local Arco. The thing that's great about these LS400s is even when you're on 
quarter tank, you still have, let's see what our range is, 85 miles, and it'll probably do further than that, so uh, I'm good. And also, the way that these fuel tanks are mounted, it's actually right behind the back seat, so it's not like it's under the car sitting flat, it's actually sitting up like this. Uh, so, and it's, you know, it, it kind of, you know, it goes up and down. Uh, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't suck air, you know, the way a traditional fuel tank will, because the fuel just goes to the bottom and that's where the pump is, so everything's groovy. Uh, so you can actually run these uh, a little bit more safely on a quarter tank than you could with like, you know, most other cars, just because of how the tank is situated. The downside with that is that you can't put the rear seats down, so you can't, you don't have like a pass through to the, to the uh, trunk. That's kind of a bummer. Uh, but that's just how they made it. I, you know, I just own it. I didn't design it. Uh, let's see. Big shout out to Working Class Coffee Roasters. I think I got that right. Got myself a really good cup of coffee today. This dude roasts his beans and sells them. He's based out of Riverside. Um, and really knows his stuff. So, uh, thank you, Willie for the delicious cup of coffee. I mean, I think there's enough caffeine in it to wake the dead. It's amazing, but really good flavor. I can't remember what he made for me, but it was delicious. A little pour over uh, for those of you that are coffee snobs, and I know, I'm looking at several of you. I know who you are. Uh, so, a really beautiful night, 74 degrees outside. Uh, it was nice driving around with the sunroof open a little bit. I just don't really want to deal with the wind noise right now. But we'll probably top this video off when I'm uh, maybe at the gas station or something. We'll talk about how much gas we put in and kind of the cost of operation uh, in Southern California of this car for a week just on gas. Uh, so I will check in with y'all in a bit. All right, I said I wasn't coming back until I get gas. But there's the worst sounding Honda I've ever heard on the drive right now. I'm gonna be quiet so you can hear it. It sounds like a goat vomiting. It's awesome. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Oh, it's just, oh, it's the worst. Let me just uh, scooch up here a minute. Corvette is offensive, but 
not the way that is. No. Mine just shoots out too many bald eagles at once. Not the tailpipes. I don't know what you call that. Those are just like bald goats or that was just terrible. I mean, that could be used, that sound could be used as a form of torture, you know, for like prisoners of war or something, you know, if you need to interrogate a witness and get get answers, just, just make them listen to that car. That was so offensive and horrible. That's one of the worst cars I've ever heard. Ever, ever. And, uh, I'm so happy we got to hear that tonight. That was so great. I'm gonna have to replay the footage just to make sure that, that we got it. I don't know if I can like enhance that audio. I'm sure I can, I just don't know if I'm gonna have enough care left by the time I get home and edit this quickly, but man, that was fun. Um, you know, what's the worst sounding car you've ever heard? Drop it, drop it down below in the comments. Uh, the thing that's been kind of fun about these vlogs is I get I get a chance to kind of just say what's on my mind, you know, at that particular moment. And speaking of car exhaust, you know, there's a guy in my neighborhood with an LS400, and it sounds really mean. Like it sounds like I thought it was a Mustang coming up the street when I heard it but it was just an old like 95 LS. And I mean, I kind of dug it, but at the same time, you know, here we are in my 98 with stock exhaust and you really wouldn't know that the car had an engine. <laughs> it's so quiet. Uh, I mean, even, even if I, I'll romp on it for a second, even though I have like no gas, but like here's wide open. Good pulling power shivers. Uh, but like you hear a, a hint of a motor, but you wouldn't know that there's like a four liter V8 under the hood. There was just there's some some mysterious engine that's propelling the LS forward. It makes a little noise and and, and then you go fast. And they worked so hard to make this car quiet. Like I'm sure there was a whole team of guys in Japan that were like, it was like their duty in life to make this car as quiet as possible. And so I kind of feel like when you put a loud exhaust like on one of these, you're really kind of missing the point of the car. But again, if that's what you want to do, you know, I I respect that. Part of me wants to do that to this car because, you know, it is a good sounding motor, especially when you, when you free it up with some, some bigger pipes and, you know, get rid of all the resonators and stuff. But still, just like getting back to the whole thing, like would you put it on coilovers? Like, yeah, I mean, that would be cool. It would be nice if it handled better. But, but then I wouldn't feel like I'm sitting on a cloud, you know, being taken, taken home from my long day. I mean, it's hard to tell like how hard these bumps are, but you know, this car just like hits bumps and it's just like nothing happens. It's so wonderful. Um, and for me as a cranky old guy, that's just what I like it for. So, you know, take that as you will. So anyway, I'll, I'll probably update once we're, once we're at the gas station or once we've filled up. Uh, but yeah, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed that. The world's worst sounding car. Gosh, that was great. So I know, I know, we're not at the gas station yet, and I just can't, I just can't be quiet. Sorry, I think it's the coffee from Working Class Coffee Roasters. Shout out Willie. Um, but, you know, the other thing that I just, I'm really falling in love all over again with this car. It's just, hope there no please. Of course, I'm only gonna do the speed limit. So, just the speed limit the whole time. Um, but you know, look at these other vehicles, and I'm just going to go half throttle. And look at how quickly this thing gets up and scoots. It's it's just an amazing amount of power 
for such an old car and such a smooth car. It's, uh, it's just fantastic. I love my Kia. My Kia is a really great everyday car. It's frankly a better everyday car than this, but this is a better car when it gets when it comes right down to it. This has a much better engine. It has much nicer. I mean, everything just feels higher quality. It's just old, but man, this car, this thing is really in a league of its own. It really is. The, it really is the top of the line. All these years later and all these miles later it still feels that way uh, I mean this car has essentially been it's been our extra car it's been sitting under an oak tree not doing much for two years and it just hopped right back into action and it's taken me everywhere I need to go and you know it's just it's ready to work and you know, it's a real testament to the people that built it people that designed it uh, you know it has a low coefficient of drag and I mean, it's amazing how good even the the seals are uh, you know, there's really not that much wind noise my sunroof makes a little bit of noise so I kind of have to like just shut the cover and then I can't hear it at all so problem solved on my end. that's fine and uh, this car is just awesome I wish it were a little bigger. I wish the headroom was better. But, you know, the the driving experience is just incredible. Even if it feels like a soggy loaf of bread. But that's what I like. So, you know, if you're looking for a soggy loaf of bread that goes fast, amen. Get an LS. Okay, I'll check in later. Bye. As promised, sorry, I'm gonna put this down for a second. Safety first. As promised, an update from the gas station. Uh, it was really expensive. <laughs> like, that was, that was really expensive. <laughs> it was like $76.82 or something. Uh, <clears throat> to go 300 and wait, how many miles? To go. No. Oh. Darn it! <laughs> I forgot to look. And it just reset. Zero miles since refuel. Uh, but let's just say it was 350 miles. So. And it probably was close to that, give or take. Give or take 10, 15 miles. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, close to 80 bucks to do my driving for four days. So, you know, if every day is like that, you're looking at, here, I'll turn this on. If every day is like that, you know, you're looking at a significant amount of money in gas per month. But, you know, I mean, every day isn't like that for me, but sometimes it is. And that's a drag. So, anyway, there you have it. My phone's ringing. I better take the call. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Do all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.